Vinny, what was the best match of the weekend? Filthy Tom Lawler has stated that Carmelo Hayes and Ilya Dragunov is the best match he's seen in all of 2023. Sean believes that Zack Sabre Jr. and Brian Danielson is the best match he ever saw in his life. I believe Tony Khan has said the same. I believe that the match of the weekend was Ilya Dragunov and Carmelo Hayes. My gut says Danielson and Zack Sabre. Wow. If Tom were here and he were to tell me, I thought Dragunov and Hayes was better, I certainly would not argue. At all. Not you for better not, he beat your ass. Well, of course he would. That's Well, yes. Collision begins. Make a cover, and Cash tries to get in the ring, apparently to break it up, but he is short by several feet, and so the referee did what the referee is supposed to do, especially after that Moxley brouhaha last week, and counted three. When I watched this, I thought that was a botch for sure. So, Ring of Honor. Tony Nese comes out. He tells us all, you eat too much bread. Pulls out a loaf of bread. Well, you know who's a big fan of bread? I sure do. Kojima. Yes. So Kojima came out to fight on behalf of the honor of bread. He flew to America, presuming that somebody was not going to like bread. His only... <laughs> There's no other explanation. Yeah. WWE NXT No Mercy. The Nintendo 64-inspired opening video makes the show an automatic thumbs up. And Dragon Lee takes one of the best bumps I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. You see what someone put on Twitter? The ref is the comedy bump where Yes. You... Top, middle, bottom. He just goes yeah, all yeah. the way down the elevator. Yeah. Unreal. Incredible professional wrestling. Yep. My star rating scale goes to five, and this is a five. Five-star match. This was one of the most violent matches in WWE history. It was one of the best matches in WWE history. Ilya Dragunov is one of the best wrestlers on the whole planet. On the planet Earth. We went to AEW Wrestle Dream. What do you say? 7,000 people there? 14,000 hands doing the Nana dance then. Like, it was a fantastic match, but it's very different watching it from however far up we were. You got a screen. Sometimes you look at the screen. Sometimes you're looking down at the mat. So I need to watch this one again to determine if it was truly the greatest match of all time. There were people on their feet, hands over their faces. They absolutely could not believe that, A, Darby lost in Seattle after promising to win and that Nick had turned on him. And so now it's three on two. There's one more person we need. Who could it possibly be? The fans holding up his sign. I'm on the edge of my seat. He was so, so happy to be there. These people were so, so happy to see him. He felt like a bigger star than ever in this five minutes. It was a huge deal. And they treated him like an all-time, all-time main event legend. And this company feels hot right now because they got a ledge. Undertaker versus John. It's did did you say the Undertricker? Is this a uh, trick no, or treat come review? come on, come on, come okay. on. I kind of liked uh, to watch Vince and Pat McAfee, and this was WrestleMania 38. Oh. And they said it was one of the worst ones. Vince has a football, he kicks it and hits McAfee with it. <laughs> and bad camera work. They had the camera going all over the place. Not so Oh, much. yeah. Mm-hmm. That was oh, awful. back in the day. The good old yeah. days. I think my memoirs are getting kind of boring. There's no more murder and bad names. There's got to be more inbreeding you can talk about. <laughs> my sister and I would walk two miles to the rink. We would let sailors walk us home. Oh, mm. These we, sailors, dude. And I, yeah, I like the sailors. How old were you? 15. No, I wasn't even 15. I'm sure these sailors are perfect, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. If I know sailors. Well, first off, does yeah. anyone want to talk about this week? Anything you want to say? What was your favorite thing, Sean? The press conference afterwards. Uh, there was. A I f- hear about this goddamn no, press conference again. Go I won't ahead. talk about the Christian go Cage ahead, part. Go ahead. MJF asked you to carry his belts, and you said no. And then MJF said, well, you can do it while looking at me. While I was getting his belt, Tony recognized who I was. So you can hear that on tape, too. He says, oh, hey, Sean, right? Thanks, Sean. Appreciate that. Thanks, Sean, which is awesome. I think we need to stick along just long enough to get through the real horrible Russo stuff with sports entertainment, extreme, and et cetera. I think they would be very disappointed if we stopped before sex. <laughs> what? So this is all foreplay for you now? <laughs> This is the worst foreplay. <laughs> it's it's going to be the worst sex as well. <laughs> well, you know, we got to wrap it up, everybody. 
They really you do. See, we're you really be, do. Practice it. <laughs> yes. We're gonna, Especially if you're saying. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Remarkable Renee Paquette is interviewing Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega when they are quickly interrupted by their old buddy, Adam. Or at least Jericho's old buddy. Adam Copeland. Uh, we need to clarify that. Yeah. We have a lot of Adams. Yeah. That might be an issue, especially because there's a guy who is frequently yelling Adam at the top of his lungs. There's got to be a skit at some point where this yes. leads to confusion. And like Adam Copeland agrees to team with, the team with Roderick Strong. He shows up at ringside. Roddy's like, who are you? Not only did Nick Jackson not win this match, but they did exactly what I did not want them to do. And that is they announced this coming Tuesday, it is John Moxley versus Phoenix. We all know what that means. They're just going to put the title back on Moxley. And I got no problem with Moxley as champion, but man, I wanted Phoenix to have a run, and if he couldn't, they should have done it with Nick Jackson. The first time this aired, we could not hear a word anybody said. A bad technical day for uh, AEW. All you could hear was what the audience heard, but the audience is in a building way far away, so it was this very muffled, Ooh, oh, God, look what I got for you. And so after a while, I'm just like, fuck it. I don't know what's going on. I've seen this now on and off for four years. Yeah. Powerbomb Symphony, a bunch of dudes, have a big match, lose, vanish. Return. Powerbomb. Hey, listen, it's a hell of a career if you think about it. He's getting paid. But, uh, like, what's going on? What are we doing with this guy? Frankly, baffling announcement. Yeah. Next week, it's Swerve versus Danielson with the winner getting a TNT title shot. When I see this, it's like, Swerve should not be losing this match. Brian Danielson should not be losing this match. So to me, the easiest thing is, don't book this match. <laughs> but they have booked this match. Hobbs is now a member of the Don Callis family. They need a muscle. They need a guy that can do a job every now and then, but largely is always killing dudes. So I was very happy to see Hobbs get chosen for this spot. I don't know exactly how they make it. The, the term I heard years ago was it's shaved down. Nice. But I think they just make a prop chair. Okay. And then Don tries to boot Kenny, but he hurts his foot again. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. You know what he needs to get is a shaved down Kenny. That way he can kick the guy and not hurt himself. You know what I'm saying? I, Wrong I, choice of words. I guess so. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and Tony cuts off the comeback by crawling over to Sky and is grabbing two big old handfuls of ass. Yeah, she did. This guy is having the time of his life. You have never seen a happier guy. He's so happy. Christian takes the mic, gives Adam a big old hug, says something very, very naughty, was muted on my feed, and he Go leaves. fuck yourself. What? Why? No, that's what he said. Oh, I thought you said that to me. You idiot. No. I saw Tegan on Monday. This show was on Tuesday. They gave her such a makeover hmm. in those 24 hours. Gotcha. I had no earthly idea who this woman was. I thought it was somebody from the breakout tournament. I was like, who is this? They had the most amazing, in a bad way, uh, segment to introduce the eight competitors. Her intangibles are daredevil. (laughs) What? These are her intangibles. So help me God, I'm not making this up. Likeability, compassion, and (laughs) self-awareness. What? If thus the best thing you have going for you in this combat sport, you are going to die. I watched the whole thing twice. I was laughing so hard I was dizzy and lightheaded. <laughs> you should see a doctor. <laughs> Actually, I have. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. So next week, it is Carmelo versus Braun with Cena in the corner and more to come. A major announcement from Cody Rhodes and Roxanne Perez versus Asuka. It really is funny. I don't know what I would do if I were Tony Khan. Because when you really think about it, it's like... They, they have a built-in excuse for losing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They're moving to an unfamiliar night, and WWE has loaded up the show. Yeah. So it's like, it's almost certain you're going to lose one way or the other. So by trying so hard to win, it's it's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. I think it should just like let it go. Just put on a good show. It's the thing that happens. Just do a normal yeah, show. Yeah, it's a on. Tuesday. Yeah. It's not like you're going to get canceled if you lose on Tuesday. To and it doesn't matter. Yes. 